we're doing this now because I want to and I'm hyper. So this is a, the, 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 the voice name. I don't know what that means. Hyrule say slots. Anyways, this was on Steam and it was rated very, very good. It was rated very good. Can you hear me? I think you can. Yeah, you can. It was rated very well, very wellly. And we're gonna we're gonna do it because I have nothing better to do. Can can I continue? I haven't done anything. I can continue. Oh, welcome to our life, beginning and always. There are various ways you can customize and interact with the game. This tutorial is an overview of how certain features work. You can read the full tutorial from the main menu to learn about everything in detail. To start off, the game is divided into three time periods called steps. Step one, childhood, step two, adolescence, and step three, teenaged. I'm teenaged. <laughs> Our life is further divided into sets of... I don't even know what that is. In the sense of blue that take place during a specific period of time. These are called moments. Moments can be played in any order or skipped entirely. You move on to the next step whenever you want by selecting that summer is ending. Steps one through three <laughs> Steps one through three include five moments. Each and even more can be unlocked by purchasing DLCs. Some are out now and other DLCs will be released later on. A lot happens over the years that go by, especially in regard to the character you play as. You determine nearly everything about the main character, name, appearance, personality, pronouns, interests, skills, or relationship with major characters, and so on. You can decide to change the details as time goes on, with a few exceptions. Your last name, skin tone, and eye color can't be altered once set. Much of the MC's basic traits are based are determined on a character creation screen. As MC shows up, more options become available on the screen. As mentioned, one of your decisions, one of the decisions you'll get to make for your character is selecting a name. You can type in any name you like, or you can pick a preset name. Preset options, oh my god, this is a lot. Preset options are called voice names because the name will be voiced aloud by the romantic lead. You'll get to hear them say your name as you play through the story. Only the default name Jamie is included in the base game. Hundreds more can be added by getting a free voice named expansion DLC. The full collection of names is separated out as DLC because of how large it is. If you're not interested in that feature, you don't need to get it. Each name in the DLC belongs to or was selected by someone who supported this project. On the- oh my god. Can I skip this? I'm sorry. How long is this? On the character creation screen, there's a clue- a cute doll you can decorate to get the idea of what your MC will look like, different traits put together, not all things you will be on a doll, script referencing one influence the influence of game, um, the devil is playing CG, CG images of certain toys that are made, there's also something like cheap. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, so we get to choose what we look like. Ooh, I kind of like, no, I like this one. I like this one. Skin tone. I think my skin t you know, we're gonna go with what I look like. I shape. I shape, I'd say for me, would be somewhat Someone like that. Actually, mine would be a bit sloped or either round. Just like, yeah, mine would be like a bit sloped, wouldn't it? So like that. Eye color would be blue. Oh, I can make it purple. No, we're gonna make it blue. Okay. So I have a middle part. Don't know if that's an option. That is. I have curtain bangs, so this one might be the best one. But we'll, we'll come back, we'll look through. Is that all of them? This is parted one. Any others that would work? And not really that one. That one maybe, that one maybe. No. I don't have two-toned. Okay, we're gonna go back to the parted one because I think that would best work. Where's parted one? Is that parted one? Okay, we'll see what the hair back is. Mine would probably be choppy or curled or some sort of curly. Not locks. Oh, yeah. No, something like that. That would look better. Okay. The, it'd be like a darker brown. I don't know if that's an option. No, it'd just be brown. Okay. Okay, so first name. Let's... Should I put my first name? Should I make it Gianna? Or should I make it something close to Jana? Gina. This will be Gina. 
Last name, Gina, 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 G, what, what's Gina, Gina Lena? Oh, there's no options. Okay. Birthmarks, I have no birthmarks. Yes, give me rosy cheeks. I don't have freckles. Hand size, slender. I have the tiniest hands. Glasses, none. Birthmarks, no. Scars, no. For no. Clothing type. Pants. Yeah, pants and shirts. Accessory types. Necklaces. Okay. That should be good. Summer in Sunset Bird was a special time of year. Your usual sleepy town begins to bustle. Do I click? Okay, I click. It was a popular tourist destination with people coming from all over to enjoy the beach, the weather, and the relaxation that came with both. The smell of the ocean, crisp and salty, hung in the air, bringing three whole months of school last vacation with it. During the summer, your mom didn't like you to wander too far outside your neighborhood, so you knew the area pretty well. I include the people. Families came and went from Sunset Bird, but they mostly stayed and did what your mom called putting down roots. They did that with my hair. But still, <laughs> they built businesses, they got to know each other, and they definitely said hello to nice young kids who waved when passing their stores. Going for a walk around town mostly meant that the familiar, friendly residents waved or asked how your family was, or mostly, or most often, just said hello. You didn't really get what they always had to had to say hi, they saw you every day. You ended up saying hi to lots of different people. You're too anxious to say hi back. No, I definitely would say hi to everyone. You enjoyed learning all about where they were visiting from and hoped to visit those places one day too. But today where there was a man sitting outside the curb of your house, he was sitting with his head in his hands, his whole body slumped over, and you wondered if he was even a real person or a statue that had magically sprung up from the ground overnight. Whoever or whatever he was, you had never seen him before. He never put his roots down in the Sunset Bird. One thing, wait, one thing about knowing everyone in Sunset Bird was that the people who you didn't really recognize really, really stood out. It was rare for tourists to venture into the residential district as your moms called it. So for you, not knowing who a total stranger was, set off a lot of red flags. Your moms had to talk with you and your big sister Lizzie about this kind of situation before. <sighs> okay. They mentioned stuff you learned, but the other types of people can help you. You remember that it's okay to run away if you feel uncomfortable. Yes. You weren't sure about this man yet. So you felt a bit scared, but you're pretty interested. Whether he was nice or not, you don't want to be bothered. Uh, I wouldn't do any of these. I wouldn't be, I mean, I'd be like nervous, but it's so great. The guy, I wouldn't, cause like if he's right at your front door, you know, I wouldn't just like fully ignore. I, I, I would talk to him. I guess, is that talk to him? Yeah, okay. You slowed down, your eyes remaining fixed on the man. There was a split second where your eyes met, and you knew he was aware. He was aware he wasn't alone on the street anymore. I thought he said he was aware he... Hey, you raised your eyebrows at the shout. Did he want something? Is that why he was here? The man stood up and started to make his way toward you. Not wanting to seem personal, I'm sorry, but wanting to be friendly. Um... Uh... I would... In a real life, I would kind of stagger back and be like, hi, because I don't know who you are. The man gives a grin. Wait, it's in front of his house, right? So then, like, the parents are there. Like, they can see- okay. If, if, they, if my parents can see me, then I'll be like, oh, hi, you know? Because then I feel okay. Because I can't just pick you up and run with you, you know? The man gives a grin of his own back. Hi. <laughs> Do you live around here? What's your name? You look the man up and down, taking in his tan skin a relaxed appearance. At least his clothes were real. At least his clothes were relaxed? The way he acting wasn't. What does that mean? His clothes were relaxed? They they looked they looked tight. They do not look relaxed. They look the opposite of relaxed. He had sharks on his shorts and a stingray tattoo, and you wondered if he was obsessed with the ocean or something. Probably a surfer guy. I mean you live in a place called like Sunset Bird. That's somewhere by a beach. I feel like it's by a beach, you know? While you were- while you made your assessment, he looked at you expectantly, waiting for you to answer his question. What was the question? Ooh. Do we tell the guy where we live? That's kind of a no, but seeing as his face looks like that... 
I'm just gonna say, yeah, I live here. That's great. He looks happy to hear it, giving you a broad smile. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> he reached into his pocket and pulled out a clean $20 bill. It crinkled in his hand as he held it up to you. Even more confused than before, you looked back at him. Well, could you do me a favor? Nothing bad, sorry. I shouldn't have. Let me start over. I like you. Oh, I'm a child right now, aren't I? No, I can't. Okay, that's a good amount. Oh, oh, oh. He cleared his throat and stood up straighter. From where you were standing, it just made him look creepier. I have a son. His name is Cove, who's about your age. Cove, it sounds like a strange name. You chewed it inside of your cheek. This guy definitely was obsessed with water. What? I do chew it inside of my cheek. You thought that was pretty cool. Um. Yeah, I thought that was. I, I would think that was cool. I'd be like, oh, cool. You've never met anyone with that name. Co oh, his name is Cove's dad now. We moved in across the street, see? He just he gestured toward the house that had been empty for a year, his watch catching a late afternoon sunlit, catching the late afternoon sunlight and reflecting off the walls. The gigantic for sale sign was finally gone. You must be Gina Lena, <laughs> right? I met your moms earlier and they told me you were eight, just like him, so he shook the $20 bill to bring it to your attention. A hopeful smile tilting his lips at the corners. Can you try and be friends with the boy? <laughs> Just give it a chance and you can keep this. He's a good kid, you'll like him. <laughs> but you've got to keep it a secret too, okay? It wouldn't be friendly to say his dad sent you. Yeah. Oh, I would, I would, I would feel sorry for the kid and I would also wonder if my parents have paid for my friends to be friends with me. Because I would be awful. Could you imagine? Could you, could you imagine, like, your best friend ever since kindergarten turned out to be, like, they were paid by your family to be your- Yeah, okay, we're going for that. <laughs> Had your mom said that exact to you and Lizzie, the thought made you frown. What'd you say? Want to make a deal? I- I- Oh, yeah, I didn't want the money. No, thank you, sorry. He def- Wait, what? Are you sure? Oh, no, I wanted to be friends with the kid without the money. Can I go back? Sure, it won't be so bad. Even if it's just for summer, I'd be enough. But only made it sound strange, more strange to you. Why does why does it lasting for the summer matter? When it was clear his initial, the kids either gonna die or they're gonna move. When it was clear his initial strategy wasn't going to fly, he tucked the bill into the back pocket and changed her press. I get it. You don't have to. Would you be more comfortable with he and I coming out for a normal visit? No money involved. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, or you'd have to ask my mom. What what do the colors mean? What do the colors here mean? Yeah, I want to meet him. His smile got bigger again. His eyes crinkled at the sides. I'll bring him by tomorrow. I wanted him to meet and greet with the neighbors today, but, well, I don't know where he's gotten off to. He laughed when he said that, but with the way his face looked, you thought he actually wanted to cry. <laughs> Me every day. If you, if, if, if you see him, can you tell him to come on home? He's got a pink... He's got a pink cast and glasses. You can't miss it. Sure thing. This definitely wasn't the normal way kids made friends. You knew that, but you were still going to help. The man smiled and reached out to pat you on the head. He paused before doing so, then pulled his hand away instead. Your moms are already checking around for me. Such a thoughtful group you are. Now I better go look too. Can't put everyone else to work while I keep sitting here. I thought he might come back and... <sighs> That's not what's important. I have to go. Thanks again, Gina, so much. He jogged off down the street without another word. You decided to check the hills behind your house. <laughs> Bye, Mom. I'm going to the hills. Step one, first sight. I forgot what the steps mean, but I remember their moments. The chirping of crickets in the tall grass greeted you, quiet and familiar. From the top of the hill, you could see the ocean. As you walked, you listened to the crash of the waves on the shore and the seagulls squawking as they settled down for the night. You've always loved the ocean. You love, you love to hear about the sea, about the merfolk and sea serpents you imagine far being too lazy to enjoy the beach all that much, and especially the sand. Okay, so I kind of feel a mix of all of these. I really don't enjoy the beach that much, especially because of the sand, but I, like, I love to hear the stories about it, and I do, like, enjoy swimming in it, if that makes sense, but, like, Going to the beach for an entire day, there's not a lot to do, but if it's for a short period of time, 
then yeah, it's fun. Does that make sense? I feel like that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Why is this such a hard decision? I feel like everything is going to change anything. I always... Uh, I'm going to do that one. Sometimes you could almost convince yourself that you had seen a flash of a shiny mermaid's tail in the distance. You took in a deep breath. You wanted to try and relax and couldn't. Me. Oh my god, I went to therapy today and she told me to relax and I couldn't. Proof. You, you weren't sure what, but something told you that you weren't alone, so you glanced around. Hi! Hi, buddy. There was a boy sitting on top of a hill, almost completely hidden within the long grass and white flowers surrounding him. His head was buried in his knees, staring ahead by himself. For whatever reason, probably just that he wasn't paying attention, he hadn't noticed you yet. You watched him a minute longer, feeling a little bit like you found a deer in the wild. Though the deer didn't have... I'd probably say green hair. But this new boy did. You watched as it fluttered softly around his face in the breeze. After a few more seconds, you took a step forward, then another, and then he glanced your way. <laughs> his aquamarine eyes reflected the light of the moon. You stopped, raising a hand to acknowledge him and show him you weren't scary. Who would say, hey, space cadet? I'd just say hi. With a start, he jumped to his feet, his hands bowing to fist at his sides. He didn't say anything, he looked so cute. He didn't say anything, he just stared at you in a strange way. He'd been crying. There were traces of tears on his cheeks and his knees, soaking the hem of his shorts, and his eyes were still shining with a few more. You'd obviously caught him off guard. His pink cast seemed to glow in the twilight, but when he caught you staring at it, he hid his arms behind his back. Something the man earlier something the man earlier had said stuck out to you. Co? Ah. His eyes widened. He studied you. How'd you know that? I don't know what's with the green ones, but I just can't connect with the green ones. Actually, no, I was it. I would be like, look, you guys, and then... Mm, how... Mm, look, you guess what I'd say as a joke. No, I tell the truth. Okay, your dad told me who you were. Oh. So is this your hill? He gestured with his uninjured arm to the patch of grass surrounding you, his face falling apart at the prospect. I can leave if it is. Um... You can't own a hill. Why not? How could you? You just do. I had a hill back home. Well, this isn't, still isn't mine. Oh. He says oh a lot. He sat back down on the, with a thump, resting his chin on his knees again. Curious about the strange new boy with the odd dad, you sat on the patch of grass next to him. The pure white flowers that covered this hill rocked back and forth gently as the stars twinkled above. The way the dotted sky made them seem like flowers, too. The night wind was as cool as it was cool as it traveled over the ocean up the hill, chasing away the heat from the afternoon sun. Why are you here? A quiet hiccup escaped Cove as soon as you asked a question, almost like they'd never stop. His tears started up again with a vengeance. My parents, they, oh, they don't want to live together with me anymore. The tears fell fast and, he and heavy over his flushed cheeks, stitching in his dark lashes. My mom made my dad leave and he took me with him and now we have a house here and I want to go home. The outburst took you off guard. By the time he was done wailing, Cove's chest was heaving with exhaustion. He sniffled and removed his glasses, wiping his, wiping at his eyes with the back of his hand before putting them back on again. I hate this place. I want this, my real life back. I want my mom. Hmm. Well, okay. I'm really bad with emotions. I don't know what to do. S stop crying. Um, oh hey, this is a green one, and I kind of connect to <laughs> it. I would either say I'm sorry, I would probably say I'm sorry, then add this on to the end of it, but just because this has more to it, I think I'll go with this. He slipped his hands underneath his glasses and pressed his fingers against his eyelids. Cove wound himself up again for another long crying fit. Sunset Bird was a nice place to live. It had a beach, playgrounds, a good school, at least you thought so. But from way off in the distance, you heard your parents, Gina! Cove? Cove? Kids, where did you go? Cove looked at you, tears still clinging to his cheeks. Don't tell them we're here. I don't want to go to that house again. I want to go home. Um, no, I wouldn't tell them that we were here. I wouldn't tell them. Um, no. It'll be okay. You were struck by a sudden need to reassure Cove. 
it it's not it's not gonna all be fun but he, is it he your family too yeah i guess then you can count on him when you're re when you really really need him you shot him a grin and push yourself back to your feet Sully hopes up with you, still looking a little reluctant. His dad's voice rang out again. Cove! Cove, can you hear me, son? Hear my little, my little baby now. He looked toward the sound of his dad's voice, silent, then turned away while rubbing his not bandaged arm. Sorry, I still don't want to go. You wait silently with him. Yeah, I get it. You do? Before you, you could answer, you hear Cove's dad even closer on the floor. There you are, bud. The trio of parents appeared over the curve of the hill. Instantly, all their eyes landed on you, and they rushed over. Both of your moms were at your side in a split second, faces filled with worry. Gina, you're- Okay, my mothers are milfs. They are literal milfs. Look at that- Okay, okay, anyway. There it is, there it is, there it is. Gina, you're here after all. We had been at the park to check for Cove and then heard of what happened earlier when you met the new neighbor. I thought you might have gone off further away. No, I was, why is everybody acting like I would say we're okay, don't worry. Uh, no, no, I've said this. No, we're just saying we're on stuff. I want my contact. Thank God you're both fine. Were you two having fun out there? You look over at Cove, who was wiggling against his dad's tight hug and pushing at his arms. I don't want to say it. I can't, I'm going to say it. You nodded, smiling slightly. Oh, that's wonderful. It feels like it's wrong. It's wrong. Finally letting go of the swimming, scowling sun, Hope's dad turned to the you. Thanks very much for finding him. I really don't even know this neighborhood. I think Gina knows this whole area so well. Absolutely. We should get going home now. It's been a long day for us all. Say goodbye, Cove. Bye. The two of them walked off into the darkness, heading towards the neighborhood. You watched Cope's bright pink cast until it disappeared. That is not working out right. Hmm, tell you what, we'll have a proper play date tomorrow, okay? You and your new friend's dad wanted to bring him by to see you in the movie. How does that sound? Sounds like words. <laughs> I'm sure can start myself. Of course. But okay. Both of your moms laughed, and the sounds overlapping into a warm, familiar voice. Mommy put her arm around your shoulder and led you towards the path. Satisfied and more than a little ready to go to bed after your long, exciting day, you followed them home. You haven't chose your feelings for Cove. It can change in later steps. My comfort with him, what does that mean? My interest with him, I'm fond. What does this mean, comfort? Um, indifferent, fond, no, just fond. We're just fond. We're just fond, okay? Um, oh, oh, what is locked? But that will be an option. I'd say direct. Morpheon will change it until step two. Okay. So, was that the step? One then? I'm assuming that was step one. At the usual breakfast table at the <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. At the breakfast table the next morning, you finished your food faster than usual. Your sister Lizzie had run out to earlier to go play, but you stayed put. Today, just like your moms had promised, Cove was coming over to hang out. Hello. Excited to see your new friend again, Gina? Mm-hmm. I like him. He Achievement. How sweet. Okay. I'm so happy he moved in. With that said, are you done with your breakfast? Yeah. With all the aspiration an eight year old can muster, you looked at your empty cereal bowl, okay. then at mom. Okay, attitude kid. Ooh, let me see. Good job. He should be here soon. Clean up, clean up began, and then on cue there was a knock. It was hesitant, like the person wasn't sure they were in the right place. Still loud, though. We need to get a more obvious doorbell. I know, I know. Gina, could you get it? Wiggling out of the chair, without really pushing it back, you made your way to the door. Hey, Lena family. Oh, I forgot. That's our last name, Gina Lena. Hey, Lena family. Thanks for having us. Mr. Holden, as your mom's called him, and his son were here. Cove looked different in the bright light of the living room, and when he wasn't crying, with 
With Dad standing in front of him and Mom and Mommy behind you, you and Cove looked at each other. Please to see your new friend again, you smiled at Cove. He smiled back with some hesitation. Mom, we're going to go play in my room. Your guest blinked and pulled in protest. He looked happy about that. He was like, take okay. care. Let us know if you need anything, you two. <laughs> why is he, why is he just like, why is my face so red? This is light was it? Have fun, kids. See, you. see you later, son. Play nice. Dang, this is my room? Wow. Wait, no, look, look, let's examine. What is that thing? This is nice. Th what, is this, is this my bed or is this just like a seating? I want this. I like that. That's nice. You go into your room. Bring out your chest a little bit and sight your treasures. Whoa, look at my carpet. Whoa, whoa, look at my treasures. Look at them. Look at them. There were lots of stuffed animals and cool bed in a window to look out. It was, a, it was a great room. You haven't had anyone show it to you in, to show it to in a while. But you were really proud of it. And that's all that matters. You lean a little closer to one of your drawings on the wall. I like this. Aww. Thank you. You're welcome. You smiled at him. You were proud of that particular piece of art. And you were glad he noticed it. He turned to look around the room a little more. Setting the books on your desk and the pictures on the walls. Hmm. Oh, you were glad for the company. Oh, oh glad for the company. It was a nice to have someone new to play with. Then his eyes landed on a tiny box of beach things you collected, tucked away by your door. He took a step towards it, before hesitating and pointing it to... Pointing... What's that say? Pointing to something instead. What's that? A whole oh. stuff found on the beach. Do you have any driftwood in there? Dragging him, dragging the box into the middle of the room, you can pull a block down next to it. I do, look. You just it to the piece at the bottom. It's a couple Neat. of specks of sand. Neat, this is a good collection. You got the sense of tone that his voice, he wasn't just saying it to be nice, or to be, like, sh Shiloh? Or to be, like, Shiloh. He actually meant it. Who or what is Shiloh? I forgot about Shiloh. Shiloh? Shiloh? He's friends with my older sister, and he's supposed mm. to hang out here this afternoon. Oh. <laughs> Do you know this guy? Do you know this guy? I want to see him. You don't have to do anything, but he's going to be here. Why is he so upset about that? Anyways, I found this gigantic shell here stuck to an a rock. You pulled out a seashell after seashell, explaining where you'd gotten each one and holding it up against some light. There were big ones, small ones, pink, purple, and orange. Most of them you washed off in the bathroom sink when you brought them home, cleaning off the sand. That's for you to bring some of this. Ooh! I would have done that. Push so if you use... I would also do that. I, I probably wouldn't have said it names. I feel like I, I feel, that's something random I would memorize to seem cool and smart, but I'm not. You had a whole picture book dedicated to different shells in sea life. You learn a lot by flipping through his pages. Apparently fascinated, either by the stories or the shells themselves, Cove listened with what looked like the force of it. The full force of his attention. That's what I look like when I'm paying attention. I go, I, li I literally stare like I look like I said this a lot. It was a new experience to be in the center of such dedicated focus. But Cove hadn't been mean to you, so he didn't mind. You smiled at him every now and then again. While showing him your collection, kids come down to the living room. You could tell the idea making him unhappy. But Mommy... Mommy was not having it. Mommy wasn't giving you much of a chance to hang around. Cove hadn't been, hadn't, hadn't been like, meeting you. You guess it was because he thinks you found each other by accident, not that a parent made it happen. Mr. Holden... Must be right telling Cove his dad was poor. Okay, I'm gonna reread that sentence. Mr. Holden must be right that telling Cove his dad was part of that world would be a bad idea. World, part of that world. What is this, Ariel? Is my food here? Sorry, my dog's barking, so I assumed my food was here. My lighting is whack. And it doesn't affect me that much. It's just a bit weird. Before you knew it, you both been escorted downstairs and deposited in the living room, ready for Shiloh's visit. Is it Shiloh or Shiloh? I don't know. I'm gonna pronounce it differently every time. If you're annoyed, I'm sorry. The two of you sat side by side on the floor at your home's entryway. I brought the box of shells. I want to keep looking at them. You should have asked. No, I'll just say great. Bust it open. We can keep looking at it while we wait for Shiloh. Cove reached in and pulled out a big orange shell. Oh. <laughs> like he hadn't spoken aloud yet. He turned to you and held it up, his eyes shining. I think this one is the best out of all of them. Mm -hmm. I like a different one. Oh, no, I would never. Okay. 
It depends how much I like this kid. Because if it's my favorite seashell, I'm not just gonna give it to you. Like, you can borrow it, maybe. You can you can stare at it from a distance, but no, yeah, no, 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 you're not gonna keep it. Um, I like a different one best. Ooh. I'll keep the conversation going. You reach into the box to take out the one you prefer to cope with it interest. The two of you were saying sitting on the floor looking through the collection of beach findings when the doorbell finally rang. Hope jumped startled by the sound. Since the person hadn't knocked, you figure it was probably Silo. He knew where to look for that. Is his friend back? You nodded, but that didn't seem to make Hope feel better. It was already obvious that Hope wasn't hiding his feelings well. You could tell what he was thinking right away. This isn't a good idea. It's just Silo. Sh Shilo. And where would you even go? He's only at our door. If you go upstairs, he'll find you. Hope glanced around the room. His eyes wide and finally paused with his gaze locked on the back of the house. I can go out the window. He was already walking towards it, scrambling to think of something to say. You stepped forward, then paused. Is this a kid or a dog? Cause I don't, I don't know. Do you want to? Oh. Everyone. I mean it. I don't want to see him. I don't know him. Encourage. He's not the bad, really. Silo is going to be more scared of you than you are of him. Okay. Silo poked his head into the living room. It was impossible to know for sure if he heard what you were saying or not. But you guys think he had. Oh, it is a kid. Okay. How old is this kid? Hi, oh, so is Lizzie younger than me? I thought Lizzie was older than me. This kid's short, then. Oh, and, uh, Cove? Cove shot you an easy glance. Mm, hi. This kid got some angst. What, what's with the aggression, Cove? Look at this happy little nugget right here. Now look at this, this little eight-year-old with, like, mommy and daddy issues. Like, what, wh why are you, don't be aggressive, you just, look at how happy this guy is! What, why are you being like this? I'm, I'm, I'm Tyler, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah. What? Use the attitude, dude. You have a lot of freckles. Uh, oh, he's insecure. What did you do? Oh, right, I do. What are you guys doing? We're looking at shells. Awesome, can I do? Of course you can. Both shrugs and look back to your box mm. of beach fightings. What about that one? Okay. See, look, now they're both upset. Look what you've done, go This poor little nugget. Aw. The plan for the afternoon, at least as far as you were concerned, was to sit and look at the beach things some more. You weren't really in the mood to do much of anything else, especially if Cope was having fun. This is the scallop shell I found last week. I kept it because it looks neat. It's a pretty color, kind of like my cat's. The beautiful glittering pink did a little bit like a rock around his arm. I said that so weird. Pink is a nice color. Oh? Okay. Oh. Is it your favorite? Not really. What is? Maybe green or blue, it might be yellow. Oh, those are all so, those are all cool. Look at this kid. Look at this adorable child. Look at this adorable child. And this mean little eight-year-old. I'm sorry, I, I love this kid. This kid is my favorite character. You're my favorite character, I love you. Oh, those are all cool. I get stop being annoying. <laughs> Not sure how to feel I'm not sure how to deal with the suddenly more awkward silence. I like the colors too. Awesome. Both of them <laughs> Both of them smiled. Like usual, it didn't take like long for Shiloh to get fidgety. Lizzie was his favorite. Without her around, Shiloh didn't seem to know what to do with himself. And Cove wasn't your sister. He wasn't that much like you either. Is Lizzie coming back? Don't know. Aw, where's Lizzie? Where'd she go? I think she's at the beach, probably. Is she playing at her park? Cove eyes lit up at the mention of the park. They look towards you. There's a park. Yes, but it is old. Can you show me? I want to go. He started getting up before you had even answered, and Shiloh jumped, in, it jumped up beside him in excitement. Really? You do too, right? She thought the park is fun. Uh, I said that I didn't want to do anything. I mean, I guess we can go. Yeah. The park is pretty great. I guess it's okay. You have to read the beach. There's lots of fun stuff to do. Lots of sand. Oh, Sand of a Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> There's a jungle gym and a bunch of swings. I 
don't know what that bit was, but everybody just ignore it. Why is my dog barking so crazily? That sounds like it could be cool. So are we gonna go find Lizzie? I don't know, I never really wanted to see her. I don't know, I never really wanted to see her. I just wanted to check the park out. I drove with any direction, Shadow Frank would turn to you. Okay, you perked up. Both boys wanted to go. It was only fair. After getting permission from your mom, the three of you were ready to head out. It was a short walk to the park. Lizzie had convinced your mom that it was so short she would sh she should always be allowed to walk to the park by herself. And when you found her, she was hanging out in a jungle gym swinging back and forth. Hey Lizzie! Her face loved when she saw you. Her big brown eyes go wide. Tina, Silo, hi, aha, uh -huh. oh, oh, who's gone? Look what you did, Co. She dropped to the ground and landed with a soft thud in the sand. Split second, Silo had abandoned you. And this and ban you two and scramble over to stand by her. You were used to being left out when it came to the three of you, but now Co was here. You wondered if he would leave too. Hello, sibling. Who's that? It's Co. He's new. I like your dress. It's a really cute dress. I remember. Hi, Co. It's not my style, but it's so cute. Okay. These two are adorable and nice. You are being a little brat. Okay, I will change my thingy from bond to terrified poker bell options. It, it, it went, um, crush, bond, and I was like, you're going to the bottom if you keep up this attitude. Let me tell you, let me tell you. He's staring at me. Look at, look at, look at those eyes, they're piercing me. I will look into the park. Welcome to my park. No one ever comes to play here, so this is where we get together. She gestured wildly with her arms as if to present the area to the newcomer. Without interrupting Lizzie's speech, Cove whispering in your ear, quiet enough so that others went up over here. I thought kids went own places like parks or hills. You couldn't help but laugh a tiny bit. Oh, oh, she needs help. What's with those wiggle brows? Wow, wow, wow. That was, that was kind of cute. That was kind of cute. You, you know, you, you, you can stay at Fond. You can stay at Fond now. While Lizzie was continued, while Lizzie continued talking, you took the chance to kick your shoes off and wriggle your toes in the warm sand. Why? It's gonna get everywhere now. It's gonna get in your house. Nice, huh? In this neighborhood, I'm the one who comes up with the ideas. You are? Yeah, I am. Else could handle the job. Lizzie is the oldest. By a lot. My mom said you're Gina's yeah. age. Yeah. Thought so. I'm still the only one in this group with double digits. Ooh, Papa. What's your name? Pop Lizzie. Papa. What about the other kids? Other kids? There aren't any. We're the only kids here, and Silo is just visiting from another place. Not even tourists really bring their kids here. This is the land of the ancients. Be careful that the oldies don't try to settle your youth. Oh. For a second, it looks like you might cry again. But something is, I shifted and looked back at Lizzie. What kind of old people? Like moms and dads or grandparents? Grandparents who don't have kids, they hate kids. Why? We haven't done anything. Is he about to cry? Stop saying that you're gonna hurt your lips. How's our crying again? It'll be like the hell situation all over again. You interrupted quickly, hoping Cole wouldn't start to cry again. He stifled, but his forehead was creasing with worry. Lizzie was staring Cole down, but Cole didn't, wasn't even looking at her anymore. He didn't seem to care she was there. He went into his own head. Silo was the next to speak, completely unaware of the situation. Um, I met Lizzie and Gina in school. You'll see tons of kids there once summer is over. I want to go to a new school. I want summer to end. Did he say, I don't want summer to end, or I want summer to end? So I will look down to dirt. He hasn't had much luck striking up conversation with Co. Look at how happy he is. He's so sad and so happy. I love you. I love you. You need to stop being angsty. And the middle one is okay. Tell him down dirt. He needs to be much more than the Cove. I like summer vacation a lot too. All of the building, tension in the air, something vanished when Lizzie laughed. At Silo's discomfort at how weird she thought Cove was at something else entirely, you didn't really know what she was okay. scratching up. Welcome to Sunset Bird Cove. Take a seat, cut up your feet, and get used to it. Wah. <laughs> you offered him a small smile, and that at least looked to reassure himself. Oh, now he's happy again. I just like the kids when they're happy, I guess. The rest of the summer, Cove was always there. You saw him more often in Silo, and some days when. When she was, when, what? You saw him more often in Silo and on some days when she was in a bad mood or busy, you even saw him more than Lizzie. You're kinda right. <laughs> he became a staple of your everyday life, the way the sun and lunch in the beach were. During your summer together, you really liked Cove. 
He was a fun person to play with, and he seemed to like playing with you too. Of course, that was when we started things. Okay. This is step one. And then summer end. Okay. So these are D DLC. What does this mean? So I think I just chose. Okay, I think this is one of the memories within step one. So step one is an entire little thing, and this is just one of the memories within it. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. I don't know what my food will be there. I'm assuming it's fine, so I'm gonna start this one. It'll be fine. No. No. Mm, oh, we'll keep going. Come back before it gets dark. All right, Cove. All right, Sport. All right, Cove. <laughs> the familiar voice drifted across the street and drew your attention away from the snail you've been watching inch slowly across the pavement. Hello. Cove waited from his dad, pushing his green hair back off his face from where the breeze was blowing over his glasses. He looked to be playing or paying only a mild amount of attention as he was being handed a few slips of green paper. Give me. <laughs> it reminded you of when you first met Mr. Holden, although he's probably not paying Cove to be friends with himself. Cove's dad seemed to feel your gaze somehow. Or maybe you made a noise, because a second later, his eyes were on you. He waved you over with a smile. He looked happy to see you, but you still felt a little weird for getting caught. You gotta learn how to be more sneaky. Come on, be sneaky little snake. You brushed your hands together to free them of the sand and jogged over to join the two, smiling at Cove first, then his dad. Gina, hi. Good to see you again. What excitement are you up to today, Gina? Stuff. I found a really cool snail across the road. He was slimy with funny eyes and had a nice shot. Mr. Holden grinned at your enthusiasm. He's also winking at it. <laughs> After you finished answering the question, Mr. Holden's attention returned to, to Cove, who was preoccupied with folding the bills he had into his tiny rectangle. Look, he's all focused. This is focus phase. It's mine too. Uh, it sounds fun. You know, Cove was about to hit the stores by the beach. Why don't you go with them? You gave a ready nod, ready to squint, turning to squint in the direction of the stores like you could see the goods they had to offer all the way from where you stood. Oh, is that okay? I don't mind. Great, I'm sure you guys will have loads of fun. Mr. Holden reached into his pockets and pulled out a leather wallet filled with money. You found it odd, since your mom's only ever seemed to have cards in theirs. Here. He leaned in to pass a crisp ten over to Cove, giving him a wink and a smile. Get something for your friend, too. Sure. For ten dollars? You can't get much. Like, for ten dollars. You can't get... What are you gonna get? Gum? <laughs> That's my boy. Cove's dad ruffled his son's hair as he was straightened back up. The bill in his hands still held out towards the green haired boy. Take care. Cove accepted the bill and after a second slipped it into his pocket. Then, with one last nod to his dad, he turned and started walking. You followed after him, intrigued by the possibilities his outing might bring. Oh my gosh. I didn't think my throat hurt until I had been talking nonstop. What did that scope do to me? Cove strayed towards a gentle tide, creeping up the sand, and he fell into a place beside him. It was a nice day. The sun was shining, and there weren't much clouds in the sky, but the wind coming off the ocean being too hot. <laughs> you took in a deep breath, enjoying the scent of salt and... There was salt, man. There was an ocean, man. It was in the air. I didn't fully read that sentence. I clicked. I'm sorry. When you look at Cove, he was dragging his feet through the sand a little, and you slowed down to wait for him. His eyes searched the ground intently. Ooh, are you looking for s Oh, no, there won't be any s Oh, oh that's for s Go look over here. Really, really, really. Who would want something like that? <sighs> you didn't feel the urge to defend activity you've been indulging in only a short while ago. Oh. A lot of people. No way, they're weird. You can't take them anywhere because they're bugs. You have to leave them alone. Cove chuckled to himself, and that ended the discussion. I'll chuckle in your face, Cove. He can think what he wants. You'll think your own things is right. My things are better. Sorry, I, I don't know what I'm doing. This is helping me focus. The comforting sound of waves filled the silence with a pleasant white noise, and you played the little game with yourself as you walked along, getting closer to the water as possible for a moment. In resulted, you had to run up to the sand quickly, but a wave rushed in more than a few times. 
I smelled them come through a few glasses away. He didn't say a word. He didn't either. What do I want those chops for? I need a sand pail. Oh yeah, I will have an old one. Close. Hope narrowed his eyes, seeming to hold wow. deep for a second. It disappeared. You lost it. <laughs> what? Really? Hope ducked his head down, lifting his fingers behind his back. It didn't seem like he was going to continue, so you nudged his arm. How did it happen? Well, Hope opened his mouth and shut it again, oh. considering. I took it to the beach one day. Uh-huh. When I got home, it wasn't anywhere. So you left it at the beach? You left it there? Nope, it wasn't at the beach when I went back. Then you lost it. It disappeared. Oh. What about you? What do you do out here? Swimming. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to raise it off of me because I don't know what I like at the beach. Hope's lips curling was so small. Me too. It occurred to you that you hadn't been swimming in a while. There was swimming in a while, not a mile. There was just so much new before school started up again, so little time. Go to your regional shopping area. The noise level grew exponentially. No longer just waves and footsteps, but the chatter of people enjoying. And you can see okay, wait, no, stop, stop, stop. stop. See me bouncing my leg by my cursor moving up and down. Okay, you can also see my arm. Okay. No longer is blazing the steps, but the chatter of the people enjoying the lovely summer day, the call of birds to find bits of food left behind, and lots of salespeople trying to get attention. You sniff the air as you walk the sides of the road. You can still smell the oceans, but there were other smells now. Like pizza, pretzels, hot donuts. It's nice. <laughs> the energy surrounding the area seemed familiar, and there was a bounce in your step as you began. There were so many things to do, but you didn't know where to begin. Okay, I'm getting really fidgety, and I'm honestly really paranoid that this thing up here is going to stop running because it did that once, and I don't want it to do that. So I, I might just save it. Save it here. It's right there, okay? It will stop for now, okay? I'll save it one more time, just in case. Look at the bruises on my hand. You see the bruises? Okay, there's bruises on my hand. I'm going to put it on my 